of possibly not getting a dime from former President Donald Trump. Wow. So E. Jean Carroll's lawyers, they got really nervous after Carroll initially celebrated after winning the $83 million judgment against Donald Trump, offering the pretty much by everyone lavish gifts and invited MSNBC's Rachel Maddow on his grand shopping spree with former President Trump's money during an on-air interview. Made her lawyers pretty pretty nervous. But now, it sure seems like the tables have turned. In fact, they're currently turning as we speak as E. Jean Carroll expresses some very serious concerns that Donald Trump won't pay a dime of that $83 million judgment. Now, Trump's lawyers, they want Trump to get back on the stand in the E. Jean Carroll case. Now, before I even get into this, I'll ask as you guys take a second, drop a quick like for the video. I totally appreciate you guys. And I just want to thank you for always, always sharing the videos and showing love to the channel. You guys are amazing. I totally, totally appreciate you guys. You guys are the best. You guys really are. Now, I don't know how much you guys have been following this whole E. Jean Carroll case, but uh, basically, this these are more Donald Trump has more haters. <laughs> this guy has so many people coming after him. Like Donald Trump has all these people coming out of the woodwork. It is wild how many people are coming after him. And, you know, there, there's the theory that, you know, they don't want him in the White House. And this is why all this stuff is coming at him right now. But, you know, he's 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 holding his own and he's still uh, he's still getting the wins here somehow. Uh, it's it's miraculous what's actually happening. So Trump's lawyers, they want him to get back on the witness stand in the E.G. Uh, e. Jean Carroll case. But Bef before I even touch on that, I want to talk about E. Jean Carroll's worry, her concern, her ser very serious concerns about this whole issue. Right. So her Donald Trump's lawyers have already warned her. Don't go out spending that money because you ain't get a dime yet. So. Uh, basically, E. Jean Carroll has expressed some very serious concerns uh, that she won't be able to collect on that $83 million check. Now, I don't know how, I don't know if you guys realize this, it's not that easy to collect. Just because you win a judgment doesn't mean that, you know, the, the judge uh, can, can go ahead and write a check as you're walking out the door. As You know, it doesn't really work that way. So anyway, uh, you know, this is a whole defamation case, which a, a lot of people are even questioning the validity of this case. Where y'all watching from? I see a lot of people in here from California, Arizona, New Zealand, Australia. You guys are you guys are definitely what's up. You guys are amazing. Uh, I, I love you guys. So anyway, uh, but what a lot of people are bringing up, which is a valid concern. How do you bring up a case from Toronto? We got Texas in the house. Sorry, I'm, let me let me focus. How do you bring up a case? And when, when these are accusations that were that have taken place allegedly in nineteen in the nineties, nineteen nineties, like I almost got to get a calculator out to figure that out. That's like thirty years ago. How do you come after someone thirty years later and be like, well, you know, X, Y, and Z happened? I have no actual visual evidence. <laughs> Um, but let me get that $83 million up off you. I don't really understand how that works. And people are looking at her like, you know, um, they're not believing it. I'll just, I'll just say that they're, they're looking at her appearance, the way she looks and they're like, ah, I don't know. You know, Donald Trump's got a lot of money. I mean, he could pretty much buy, you know, <laughs> what he whatever he wants why would he want to mess with her so that's what a lot of people are saying but these new filings they're responding to trump's demand that his trial judge delay enforcing the eight figure sum now this is the same man donald trump same guy they're coming after him for 300 it's not even 350 million dollars it's more like 455 460 it's probably approaching 460 because when you look at the fact that his new york case with um uh, Letitia James and Judge Angeron, they're coming after him for like $455 million, but they're racking up $112,000 of interest per day. So um, that's about an extra million dollars being added on every eight or nine days. So 
who knows what it's up to right now. Anyway, so um, basically, Trump is trying to get the trial justice to delay enforcing this eight-figure sum. As, former pres as the former president attempts to get the verdict reduced or eliminated entirely in the post-trial motions. Because here's the thing. Just because you win the case doesn't mean you can't uh, uh, you, you can't counter. Number one, you can counter sue. That's one option. Um, but then you can also appeal. And so here we are. You know, you have Trump's team essentially looking at the cars or looking at their options to see what the next smartest move is. Now, ideally, if I'm Trump, I want to get this thing wiped out. And this is why Trump's lawyers went ahead and warned E. Jean Carroll, don't go running out there buying up everybody, you know, lavish gifts and whatnot. So there's a lot of corruption out here going on. A lot of people are, you know, you know looking at the judiciary system and questioning, you know, hey, do we have crooked judges uh, in, in, in on some of Trump's trials? Okay. So the questions are, are out there. The questions are swirling. Um, now, opposing those demands, Carol pointed to the more than $454 million judgment in Trump's civil fraud case, which, like I said, it only continues to grow at, you know, roughly 112 ish thousand dollars per day due to the daily interest that's getting tacked on that Letitia James on her Twitter account is clearly keeping track of uh, as she gives daily updates on how much more interest Trump has been uh, uh, assessed on his bill on his penalty for New York City. Anyway. Uh, quote, to begin, recent developments give rise to some very serious concerns about Trump's cash position and the feasibility and the ease of collecting on the judgment in this case. Now, this came from E. Jean Carroll's lawyers. The thing, though, is Trump on Wednesday, he offered to post a $100 million bond in the fraud case while he appeals. Like I said, you know, appealing is one of the options you got, right? Writing in court... <clears throat> writing in court filings that the eye-popping judgment made it impossible to secure a bond in the full amount. So New York judge in the trial's appellate court, appellate division, ruled that enforcement of a multi-million dollar judgment would not be paused unless, unless Trump could post a complete bond, but did, but did pause the enforcement of two penalties regarding the uh, the the former president's ability to seek loans. So basically, all right. So here's the thing: there's a lot going on in New York. It's you, you, he's got two huge cases that that have gone down in New York City, and it's like, man, like does New York City just not like Trump? Which is kind of weird because it's like you know, I feel like it, I don't know the whole history of Trump's um, real estate investment or a uh, real estate development portfolio or how it got started. But I want to say that Trump got started in New York, didn't he? Like, I swear some of Trump's earliest investments um, in real estate were in New York. So you would think that he would, you know, um, be well liked in the city. I don't know. Maybe because it's more of a blue state than a red state and Trump was, you know, uh, Republican, uh, and, and, and so I don't know who knows anyway. So a federal jury in New York awarded Carol this $83 million lawsuit after Trump was ruled to have defamed the advice columnist by denying her assault claims in 2019 when Carol came forward publicly. So, um, Trump has insisted though, that Carol made up the story. He, he insisted that Carol has essentially fabricated the story to sell her book. Now, who else has a book coming out? Doesn't doesn't Fanny Fanny Willis Fanny yeah doesn't Fanny Willis have a book either coming out or is out? I feel like if you want to sell a book, you need a real good side story. You need some kind of you need some kind of like you know publicity stunt in order to get more traction, more eyes on that book, so you can become a, a New York Times bestseller. Is this what's happening here? You bring up, um, you know, you maybe leverage Trump to help get book sales. I mean, Trump has written multiple books. 
even if he didn't write them himself, himself, you know, uh, he has multiple books, one of which is uh, Art of the Deal, um, which actually, I believe, may have been a New York Times bestseller in and of itself. Um, anyway, so Trump's net worth is famously obscure, but estimators like Forbes and Bloomberg has placed his wealth somewhere between $2.6 billion and $3.1 billion. Um, now, what I do think is interesting, though, is that's kind of smart. Like, you know, if you're Trump, I don't think you necessarily want your net worth being known, you know, um, especially when you got all these people coming after you just before the conveniently just before the 2024 presidential elections. So there is that. <laughs> so anyway, but here's where it gets real interesting, though. So Donald Trump's lawyers said Tuesday that the ex-president deserves a new trial and a fresh chance to tell a jury why he berated writer E. Jean Carroll for her abuse claims against him after she revealed them five years ago. So Trump's lawyers went ahead and made the assertion that they renewed the challenges of the $83.3 million award to Carroll in January by a Manhattan jury. The award raised to $88.3 million, what Trump owes Carroll after another jury last May awarded $5 million for the longtime advice columnist after concluding that Trump basically, you know, abused her in spring of 1996 in a dressing room of a luxury department store in Midtown Manhattan and then defamed her with comments in October 2022. Picture, I'm just trying to picture that. Like, how does that even happen? Like, number one, aren't there people who work the dressing rooms? Like, when do you really get a chance to go into a dressing room, especially in some luxury department store, without having someone, like, working there and and, and being like, hey, what is this man and this woman doing walking into a dressing room, right? You know, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to understand, like, how would this even, how does this even happen, you know? And I think that's what a lot of people have trouble understanding, uh, how could something like this happen? And then, you know, if you're in a luxury department store, wouldn't wouldn't somebody hear something? Um, there's, you know, a million cameras in luxury department stores, and they're saying that it was in Manhattan, right? So what's in Manhattan? What luxury department stores are in Manhattan? You probably got, what, Louis Vuitton? and uh, But this is in the 90s, so I don't know. Macy's, Bloomberg, not Bloomberg, <laughs> Macy's, Bloomingdale's. Um, I'm drawing a blank. But I can't think of a single major luxury department store. Yeah, a department store in Manhattan, Midtown Manhattan, that wouldn't have a crap load of cameras everywhere, security cameras, surveillance cameras, um, and of course, employees working the floor and manning the fitting rooms. You ever try to go try on anything? They're going to ask you how many pieces you have typically. But at, a, at a minimum, even if they don't ask you how many pieces you have, they're going to look at what you have and they're going to open up the, the door for you. So I just have a hard time understanding how did this happen and how do you bring it up so late in the game, 30 years later, and then win? So Trump did not attend the May trial, uh, but was a regular fixture in this, this year's trial, sh shaking his head, but re repeatedly and grumbling loudly enough that his from his seat at the defense table that a prosecutor actually complained that they could hear him. But, you know, but think, guys. You know, these are some high-end stores in Manhattan, and they said department stores. So when you say a department store, that really that really shrinks the number of stores down that this could have taken place in. So anyway, um, in 2019, Trump uh, do I don't know how you pronounce this word derided Carol, saying she was quote totally lying end quote to sell a memoir and that he'd never met her through a 1987 photo. Uh, excuse me, though a 1987 photo showed them and their then spouses at a social event. So I don't know. Uh, but at the same time, you could be at a social event, have have your picture taken and have some strangers be in the background. So that's not impossible either. Uh, I mean, how many times have you gone to the mall? Uh, uh, let's say you go to a mall, maybe you go to a bar, maybe you go to a, a nightclub. And just imagine if someone just happened to take your picture. You and your spouse are out having a good night. Someone, some random person takes a picture of you, right? Imagine who might be next to you. It could be any one of any, it could be anyone next to you. There could be an assortment of people next to you. It doesn't mean you know them. 
right? So, you know, imagine you're on the, uh, I don't know how many people watching the show are in New York City right now, but imagine, you know, you're in the subway and someone takes your picture as you're like holding on the rail, trying to hold on, right? If someone took your picture and someone's standing next to you, that doesn't mean you know them, right? If you're walking down the street during a, you know, in a, on, on a busy street and there's people next to you and some paparazzi jumps out and takes your picture and you happen to be walking next to someone, does that mean you know them? You know? So anyway, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just trying to get a better understanding for, of this, but y'all let me know what you think. Uh, I just wanted to <laughs> kind of uh, get your feedback on that, but let me jump in the comments and see what you guys are saying about this. Let me see. Um, so we got James Crawford in the house. We got angel wings what's going on james crawford he says i know trump is full of it but but they're but but is more but they're but they're more than a book sale hmm. uh, i struggle to uh, uh read that one my bad <laughs> um let's see uh we got james kowalowski in the house we got lisa Cardin. uh we got angel wings um, Diva's mom. Hey, it's nice to see you too. Thank you so much. Let's see. Uh, Chris Peranto. Let's see. So I think we have mixed opinions on this. Uh, some people don't believe her. Some people don't believe Trump. What do you think is the more likely scenario? Uh, drop me some comments down below. Let me know if you believe Trump uh, and his defense, but also let me know if you believe E. Jean Carroll in, in her claims. Uh, either way, I wasn't there, so I don't know, but I'd love to hear from you guys. So drop me some comments down below. Um, I just wanted to appreciate you guys for hanging out with me tonight. Uh, and as usual, I will see you on the next one. Y'all be safe guys.